So it doesn't converge. Brilliant, right? You don't need to know what the limit is or what the proposed limit is to show that it converges or doesn't converge. Okay. Nice. Okay. Um, let me do another example, just, and I'll let you complete this this example, but I'll just show you an example where you have no idea what the limit is, but you could show it converges. Hmm. Example. Suppose x1 is 1, x2 is 2, and you now define recursively xn to be the average of the previous two terms. That's an interesting process. Does this converge? Well, I have no idea what its limit is, but it's very easy to show that it's Cauchy. I'm not going to do it, but but the point is, you see, when you have a, a limit defined like this, or this, a sequence defined like this, you may not have any idea what the limit is, right? But Richard can say authoritatively it converges because it's Cauchy. And because this is a sequence of what kind of numbers? Real numbers, right? Not true if, if this were uh, the rationals, right? Because we wouldn't know that the limit were rational. Okay. In fact, it's. It's, uh, it might not be, but uh, a very, very nice um, example. What, what kind of, where, where do such sequences arise? Lots of places, recursive methods for finding roots, right? This is a Newton's method, right? You use sequences like this all the time. You can show it converges, theoretically, without knowing its limit. Beautiful idea. OK, excellent. So now, let me really blow your mind. What if, a, what if a, a space is not, what if a space is not complete? So here's a, so here's a question you might ask. If x is not complete, like the rationals, it's not complete. Well, that's not a good thing, right? But um, what might you hope to be true? Maybe some Cauchy sequences converge, but what's a bigger thing you might hope to be true about a space that's not complete, like the rationals? Maybe it has gaps, but Lindsay? OK, so you're, what you're saying is, if I have a universe that consists of only q, maybe I could say it converges, not in q, but to some bigger space, right? Which I haven't yet defined, right? Because it, it happens that q can be embedded in r, which is complete, right? And so here's a natural question to ask yourself. If I have an arbitrary metric space that isn't complete, can it always be embedded in a space that is? Oh, interesting. If x is not complete, um, can it be embedded in one that is? And the answer is, well, so here's an example, of course, q. So an example here is q, and it can be embedded in r. What do you think the answer is? Yes, that's a very, very beautiful theorem. And you're going to prove part of this theorem in your homework, next homework. So um, here's a theorem. Every metric space, this is an amazing theorem, actually. I've assigned half of the theorem to prove and the other half for you to read. Every metric space xd 
I'm just telling you what the metric is. It's the distance metric on x has a completion, which uh, I will call x star d. And what do I mean by the completion? What I mean is uh, there's a way to define a big, a, a big space that has, as a subset, this smaller space, such that the metric on the big space, when restricted to this smaller space, gives the same metric as the small space. Hmm, amazing. Amazing idea. So let me, sh let me sort of sketch the idea for you, because you'll encounter it on your homework. But uh, Yeah, in fact, I know what uh, you So the question you're asking is, uh, in what sense is this completion? There could be lots of completions. In what sense is, is this completion uh, 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 unique as it's defined? And I'm about to say, I'm about to answer that question. Right, because Q can be better than R squared, right, if you want. That's sort of what you're saying. So this theorem says that there is a completion. But the proof actually shows you exactly what completion it is. And it's the, the construction is, uh, is actually unique uh, as, as it's defined. But there could be lots of completions that aren't unique, I mean, that aren't uh, isomorphic. But the one that the proof suggests is, uh, is unique. So here's the idea. Given x. Whatever the space is. Whenever I say x here, think q. Okay, that's maybe the best way to to, to gra grasp what's happening here. Give me you think rational numbers whenever I say x, but x could be any metric space. What I'm going to do is, let's see, take a wild guess. How am I going to get at those things that aren't already in the space? We've done something like this before. Yeah, if. If, I, if this, my space has some gaps in it, well, I can't talk about the gaps because I don't have anything to, to, don't have a way of defining them. Maybe I can get at those gaps using the things that are already in the space. Namely what? The Cauchy sequences that are in the space. So in fact, what we're going to do is, this is the beautiful idea, let's let x star be the set of all Cauchy sequences. So this is the set of all Cauchy sequence in x. Now, of course, there's a problem with this. If I just stopped my definition here, which I'm not going to do, but I'm, well, temporarily. If I stop my definition here, there, there are way too many things in this space. It's huge, right? So imagine the rationals. There are lots of Cauchy sequences that converge to 0, right? So I, I don't want to say they're all different. So I'm going to actually look at the set of all Cauchy sequences under a equivalence relation. Good. Under an equivalence relation. And the equivalence relation I'll call tilde. And we have to say what that is. Where two sequences, this is a sequence, is equivalent, Pn and Qn are equivalent, That's what I'm saying. They're equivalent if what? Yeah, so you want to say this in a way that doesn't refer to the limit, right? If you, your natural thing you want to say is you want to say they're equivalent if they have the same limit. But not all these Cauchy sequences have a limit, right? So instead you say they're equivalent if their difference gets small. Very good. Excellent. If, this is such a beautiful idea. If I let the limit as n go to infinity of the distance from pn to what? qn, if that limit goes to 0. So there's the, that's one big idea. Period. So now these are the things that we'll call equivalent. And now what's beautiful about this is you can define a metric on this. So if you don't mind, I'm going to call, um, let me call this sequence, 